Elon Musk desires to develop and promote automobiles that may drive themselves. He desires to design and deploy his personal synthetic intelligence mannequin. He desires to create and set up life-changing mind chips. But certainly one of his greatest targets is to assist humanity and turn out to be an interplanetary species. Starship, probably the most highly effective rocket ever constructed, is designed to just do that. But after the preliminary April launch of the car, which resulted in the destruction of the launch pad, the mid-air destruction of the vessel and injury to the encircling surroundings, SpaceX might want to rack up the approval of a number of regulatory bodies earlier than it flies Starship once more. The FAA stated that it expects Starship shall be able to fly by mid to late October, but a concurrent environmental review is another wild card to that schedule. Oh well, this seems like a joke for SpaceX. This has caused great frustration for the company and its CEO. We probably won't see any Starship flight in 2023. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. In a September 18 interview, Kelvin Coleman, FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, said his office was working well with SpaceX to confirm that the company had implemented the corrective actions from a mishap investigation the FAA formally closed on September 8 related to public safety. Coleman said that of the 63 corrective actions listed in the mishap report, 27 are linked to public safety. So one thing that we'll need to see before the next operation is evidence that shows that the company has closed out the corrective actions that are specifically tied to public safety, he said. That is tied to a modification to the launch license FAA issued to SpaceX for the Starship Super Heavy launch in April. That license was effective for just the single launch that took place April 20, requiring the company to request the FAA modify it to enable additional launches, something that would have been required regardless of the outcome of the launch. We're on a pretty good schedule, he said, affirming comments made by the FAA's acting administrator, Polly Trottenberg, at a conference September 13, where she projected that a modified license could be ready in October. It'll probably set us somewhere in mid to late October for conclusion of the safety review. He added, though, that completing the safety review alone will not be sufficient for the license modification. A separate environmental review is needed to examine changes to launch site infrastructure including a water deluge system intended to minimize pad damage suffered in the April launch. That review is being carried out in conjunction with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to comply with the Endangered Species Act. A spokesperson for that agency said September 19 that the Fish and Wildlife Service is discussing the project details with FAA staff to understand the extent of new effects of the water deluge system. Sadly, the problem is they have yet to begin the process. Yeah, that is unacceptable, Musk wrote in a post on X. It is absurd that SpaceX can build a giant rocket faster than they can shuffle paperwork. While SpaceX has, apparently, already moved forward with its corrective measures, the FWS has yet to review these upgrades, particularly the newly installed deluge system at the Starbase launch mount. An FWS email sent to Bloomberg also claims that the review process could span anywhere from 30 to 135 days. Given SpaceX's hopes of relaunching Starship next month, this development could significantly disrupt the company's timelines. Emphasizing the environmental concerns, Aubrey Bozek, a public affairs specialist at the FWS conveyed to Bloomberg in an email, once the service reviews FAAA's final biological assessment and deems it complete, Consultation will be reinitiated and we will have 130, five days to issue a final biological assessment. Buzek further clarified that, if additional information becomes necessary, the time frame can be extended upon mutual agreement between the FAA and the service. Should the FWS utilize the full 135-day window, Starship's launch will not take place this year. The environmental scrutiny arises from the potential effects of SpaceX's activities on sensitive local habitats hosting endangered species. The FAA has sought consultation with the FWS under the Endangered Species Act as of 
August 11 aiming to evaluate the implications of SpaceX's post-mishap modifications, the FWS told Bloomberg. Spraying water upwards into an advancing rocket may seem harmless, but the company needs to follow strict rules as it pertains to the discharging of industrial process wastewater, specifically rules mandated in the Federal Clean Water Act. As the FWS assessment looms, the FAA has yet to grant SpaceX the necessary approvals for its proposed second flight. If the FAA determines that its prior environmental assessment from 2022 is no longer valid due to modifications made for the upcoming flight, a more comprehensive review may be warranted, as the regulator explained in an emailed statement. And of course, the FAA needs to be happy with the recently executed corrective actions. Needless to say, this could serve to delay the launch even further. In its statement, the FAA emphasized its commitment to ensuring all safety, environmental, and regulatory concerns are addressed before SpaceX is given clearance for another flight. SpaceX has now de-stacked Ship 24 and the hot stage from Booster 9. According to Kathy Luter's announcement, this is the final step of the mission. One crucial task is configuring the flight termination system. The team will once again meticulously inspect the vehicle right up until the moment of launch. Each engineer responsible for their respective areas will continue to review all of the issue tickets. They're constantly exploring any additional measures to maximize the success of both the vehicle and the mission. Hope that everything will go faster. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.